Remember, kids, you too can get whatever you want in life from your elders as long as you systematically break down their will to live. So, you know, just be you. <laughs> Wait a minute. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, hi, <laughs> we're here in catch-up mode. To put it mildly, very far behind. Uh, I think it's like one of three movies I'm covering in the next two days. So, uh, uh, we were gonna get those done sooner, uh, or at least watch more movies sooner. But I had some stuff come up last week. So I was like, "Yeah, this isn't happening." Um, so now we're catching up, starting with Earwig and the Witch, which I guess technically came out last year. It's one of those weird, like, released yeah. in December, but streaming in, fe- in February or something. I don't know. Yeah, pretty much. Like, I think it, uh, like, I'm not sure if it got released. It probably got, like, a limited release in theaters, but, like, it just got widely released uh, here at the end of January on HBO Max. Yeah, so I guess it's just, it came to America in February, so we're counting it. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Um, this is the newest uh, Studio Ghibli film uh, made by the son of Miyazaki that I guess is based on a book of the same name. Um, and it's kind of a waste of time. Yeah. Now, you have a much more personal attachment to uh, Miyazaki than I do. Yeah, no, yeah. I Just Ghibli in general. <laughs> like, I, I love Ghibli movies. Like, I grew up on these things. And, like, they always... Uh, most times like even their weaker stuff is still really good like when good when good is your worst that's that's something about the studio this is as i was talking with some people um the way that this is i've been hearing is like this is basically the cars two of the ghibli world oh god <laughs> <laughs> that's a horrifying <laughs> thought yeah yeah um, um i mean i, I can't haven't judge it because i haven't seen cars 2 i know you have i watched mm-hmm. your review on it <laughs> i feel like cars 2 made me angrier but that's because i had listened to larry yeah. the cable guy for an hour and a half so. yeah like this is just really boring reductive not reductive uh repetitive, repetitive um bl- kind of bland and ultimately kind of goes nowhere until literally like last five minutes and then, then you're kind of like well, where the fuck was that for the last hour and a half? Yeah. <laughs> like, I got more personality out of the freaking end credits. And I was like, wait, well, hold on. Like, all that story that just happened, why do, why was that, why is there only five minutes left? <laughs> like, yeah. this is where the story's supposed to start. It's like, why is this thing where, like, you're showing off, like, magic and rock, and, like, like, rock, is there barely any of this? <laughs> Like, it's okay. mostly her just like cleaning and grinding for potions, basically. Uh, it's just so like, those... And sorry, I, I'm also really annoyed because like this character is not very likable. No, no, none of them are. Uh, like I kept on the Drake was kind of interesting. Uh, yeah, when, like, he was actually in the movie. Uh, yeah, like he was the only like really character that had any sort of dimension, and they don't give him enough to really work with. Yeah, like I said, it all happened in like the last 10 minutes. I was like, well, hold on, back the fuck up. Yeah. Can we go into more of this, please? This actually yeah. seems like compelling and like character driven and stuff like that. But no, you're stuck with this little bitch uh, yeah. for a good chunk like, of the movie. Who is like, she's this... not the worst person I've dealt with in a movie, but like she's. As she's a not character, she's not, she's not likable. It's like her whole shtick is. I can make people do what I want and I'm going to keep doing that. Kind of like, as we joked in the beginning, she basically just like annoyed them into submission. Basically. Like I said, she's, I, I would even go further than that. Like this woman's a straight up sociopath in the making, uh, yeah. right down to the very beginning where she just manipulates everyone around her with like, like, Oh, uh, is that a sweater for me, mama? Oh, thank you so much. Oh, by the yeah. way, we dress as clansmen for the local grave. I hope that's okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're all dressed as ghosts. <laughs> they're all dressed as ghosts. But uh, I remember her. She has like the two points there. Go. So you were joking, like, "Oh, thank God it was two. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I was like, "Oh, thank God her hair went like this, and she didn't go for like <laughs> the mohawk look." You know, that would have been a lot worse. Uh, <laughs> oh God. But yeah, because also, uh, but she eventually gets like 
apparently she's the daughter of this witch character. He's being a band called the Earwigs, and her name is yeah. Earwig, and then she gets left at an orphanage because the mom needs to go fight some witches or something. I don't know. Yeah, uh, I was like, where was all this stuff? Wait, what? You kind of broke out there. It's like, where is all this stuff? I'm kind of losing your audio there, man. <laughs> One moment. Sorry, is that better? That is better. Okay. Sorry, yeah. I think I had my background noise suppression not too high, but it's like, where was all of this? Right. Like, like oh, the interesting like, stuff that actually makes the movie interesting. We're like, oh, we don't need all that. We need to have like uh, the foster mom and the kid argue about, uh, you make me do too much work. Do more work. You don't teach me magic. I'm not going to teach you magic. And the same conversation like 20 times for literally yeah. an hour. Like, it, it basically went from Star Wars original trilogy to Star Wars prequel. In oh. terms of what we wanted and what we got, <laughs> don't, don't piss off the Star Wars fans now. I already, like the, the prequels were a masterpiece. I mean, you mean, you mean, which is I am the fans, <laughs> 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 and therefore I am the Senate. <laughs> it's like what's that one joke? Uh, one like joke trends going around everywhere where they just. Uh, they they took out uh, Palpatine's line of "Do you want to kill me?" and they they bleeped out the word "kill." So <laughs> just, <laughs> so just, Do you want to kill me? <laughs> I would certainly like to. I know you would. <laughs> feel your anger. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, tangent. But I thought it was funny. Oh uh, god! But it, it, like, what? It, it, what I mean is, obviously, like, the way that, like, the prequels focus more, like, on the politics side of things instead of, like, the magic and the whimsy, like, the yeah. original trilogy did. Oh, who doesn't want to watch, like, Ted Trade Federation deals? Yeah. <laughs> um, but, like, yeah, so just characters. seeing that happen over and over again, just, yeah, arguing and cleaning and going out to a garden for... Was basically, like two-thirds of the movie give or take yeah like it's like it's that it really is like the body of the movie like something that should be actually happening it's just like nope we're literally gonna yeah. grind through this whole thing and uh we're gonna leave the most interesting bits for literally the last 10 minutes of the movie i know kicks yeah. i kept looking at the runtime like this all can't be happening right at the end right like this feel yeah. like it's finally getting started this feels like the you know the actual crisis the uh, instigate yeah. like, the inciting incident but nope that's the end yeah like it was as i was telling you it's like this felt like this should have happened at the like either at the start of the second act maybe even the end of the third but yeah, no, like, no that, this felt like this should have been the start of the second act like that's when stuff got interesting but like nope not at all it just like oh she gets whatever she wants now six months yeah. later that's that's the moral story she gets whatever she wants now okay yeah now, I don't and know like, how that compares to source material, but yeah, I don't know. But like that could have been interesting. The whole idea of like the way that she develops the relationship with like these two people who are like former bandmates of her mother. And yeah. yeah, the whole thing where like that's her mother had like no bearing on the story whatsoever. Yeah, it, it does not play into it at all. <laughs> like, could you imagine they had the whole thing where they had the idea of the family versus found family thing? Mm -hmm. Like that would have been such an interesting angle. Like that idea of like, seeing these people at odds like actually grow together and then like this mother who did who did genuinely care but like couldn't care for it and like seeing like the being torn at like that kind of stuff that would have been nice that would have been good that would have had that ghibli family magic that like i'd love to see but no nope. but apparently the movie the the director thought that just listening to bicker for an hour literally yeah. an hour would be more I, interesting like i and this is the problem is Goro is still trying to find his footing. Mm. That's the nicest way to put it. Um, Cause like last time he, the first time he did something on his own without his dad was tales of the earth sea. And that didn't do very well. Then they actually worked together. Um, I'm trying to remember. Which Up on Poppy Hill. I think. So. Yeah. I think that was the one. Yeah, because that's um because yeah, yeah, I think it's like, what we're like Goro directed and um how uh wrote it. Yeah, up on Poppy Hill, that was the one. Oh, didn't realize he directed the TV series that's on Amazon. Hmm. But um yeah, that's the that's just the best way to put it. 
And um, the animation, while not outright terrible, is um, it's it's not that great. And I feel like calling it like. I honestly kind of thought the animation was terrible, which is disappointing for a Ghibli film. A Ghibli film, yeah. And I didn't know like, Ghibli fan, but like they've always had a beautiful like uh, animation up to this point. And this, yeah. And this is clearly a realm where they're just not comfortable, and it shows. Yeah, like sometimes the environments, like it, like looked okay. Like the way that like it's more like the des- like how the art direction was fine, but in terms of the actual quality. It was just like it didn't live up to what they were trying to go for. Well, I mean, it's more like they're trying to just uh, port their traditional, uh, like, like trademark Ghibli style into a 3D format, and it just doesn't work. Yeah, um, um, it looks really ugly, and it looks really stilted, and it doesn't have any real fluidity to it. It feels like, like I said while I was watching it, it looks like a really choppily made uh, direct-to-video Disney movie. Uh. So fun fact, though, um, uh, at least according to, I, to IMDb, this is actually considered a TV movie. That makes sense. Uh. Yeah, that might actually explain a few things. I think if I knew that going in, that might have tempered my expectations a little bit. But this got off but the, the problem was release, ex- so it doesn't have any excuse at that point. Mm. Yeah, exactly. Like, well, to, And also, to be fair, Batman Mask of the Phantasm was supposed to be a direct-to-video movie, and that got a theatrical release. <laughs> Still, like, except, like that, I actually had the and that looks solid. And, yeah, I was gonna say, I, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, is, like, yeah, like to further your point, it's like okay, you know, fair and uh, you know, add on to it. Like if, just... if Return of Jafar made it to theaters, that would not even be as even close to where regarded as it is today. And quite frankly, it shouldn't be. But that's a whole nother topic. Uh, <laughs> uh, um, but and it's, it's, but it makes the whole thing like. So even if you do have to sit through like the stilted writing and the repetitive scene dynamic, then you don't even have the interesting visuals to look at the what in a typical Ghibli film. Yeah, and that just really just bogs, drags down the whole experience and kind of takes away from the, the, what even brings you to a Ghibli film to begin with, which yeah. is like Cause atmosphere just... and color. And I'm not a big Miyazaki fan, but even I can recognize that. Yeah, because like the funny thing is like, yeah, I was talking to my wife about that. It's like even in like a like Tales of the Earth Sea, that at least had some it, some good art to it. At least from the stuff that we'd seen. But this um, kind of obs- the modern day obsession is one thing that kind of bothered bo- me about modern day animation is this idea that everything's in 3D now. I was like, guys, it's okay to have 2D things. Kids like 2D things still. Yeah. <laughs> That's still just... a popular format. Um, not every th- goddamn movie that comes out needs to be in 3D. Um, yeah. So I'm just, um, it's, it's just, it's not a terrible movie, but it's definitely a disappointing and boring one. And that, I, you know, it's, it felt like, we got two in a row of just dealing with boring movies. The only solace that we got was a, we could make more jokes during this compared to the little things. And B, this was a lot shorter than the little things. <laughs> At least it felt a lot shorter. Yeah. Uh, Cause it was only an hour 20. Yeah. Um, there's that. I mean, so it's like, like, this definitely feels like them trying to step outside their wheelhouse and it just, they, they clearly weren't comfortable with it. Yeah. Um, they clearly weren't willing to make the changes they needed to make to make this format change work for them. Yeah. Um. At the very least, on a design level, um. Because like, even if this is like two D and hand like hand drawn animation, that would have made this more tolerable to sit through. I think uh, so. Now, like, I if I had to pick which one was worse, I'd say the little things is definitely worse because yeah. I wasn't as miserably bored as I was in little things. <laughs> um, and it, I will admit, at least something happened in the end of this movie. <laughs> compared yeah. to the little things which was well i guess everything goes back to the way it was all right <laughs> what a waste of two hours of my life yeah i just it, it's uh, <laughs> i don't know what else to say it's just okay, it's a disappointment it's okay. and <laughs> it's just i'm i'm really bummed out just i'm like i'm a huge ghibli guy like i got the freaking miyazaki collection like that collector set on Blu-ray, and I want to watch that right now because I want to watch something good. <laughs> it's okay, buddy. You can go. You can go watch it. The dream of Miyazaki is not dead. Just this movie is. <laughs> well, I mean, considering he's more or less re- basically retarded, I think he's working on something right now. 
So well, like the, like the dream of him, the, yeah, the yeah. good stuff is still there. This doesn't erase or diminish yeah. any of their previous works. By the way, if you want to keep that dream alive, don't read about him. That's all I'm gonna say. Oh God, what? <laughs> He's just a very sad, depressed, angry man. He, despite his movies, he's more like Alan Moore in his personality. Mm, okay. Mm. That's the best way to describe it. Alan Moore is no one's surprised by Alan Moore's cynicism. Let's put it that yeah. way for anything he's ever written. <laughs> yeah, like his whole deal is like, I think for Miyazaki, the whole deal with him is I really have no faith in the world. So I'm going to make these things so I can pretend or like give people something to eat ironically give people something to hope for or give like an idealized version of what i wish i could hope for i will say of the two i want a biopic on alan moore so goddamn badly just for how batshit his real life is (laughs) (laughs) this is a man whose wife divorced him for his mistress (laughs) (laughs) that is completely true (laughs) I think the Simpsons made fun of that then. <laughs> it's totally happened. It's like, I want to know the backstory of that so bad. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Jesus. All right, uh, well, I think there, we but... pre- <laughs> So I think we pretty much said all we can say about this movie then. I was like, if there's a biopic of Miyazaki, it's probably more like a sardonic, depressing, uh, like black and white drama. Alan Moore's is going to be like a wacky Seth Rogen comedy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I know because I just know that like yeah Miyazaki uh didn't his stuff was interesting because I know like he didn't exactly have the best fatherhood and that translated to him not being a really great father either I think from what I remember because I mean his father was spent all his time working like in an air like an airplane factory <laughs> like working on like and that's kind of what developed Miyazaki's kind of recurring theme of flight that makes sense. Yeah. And but unfortunately he was very absent as a father when it came to Gordo, from what I remember. Mm. And like they had a very strained relationship. And I from what I remember, that whole deal of Tales of the Earth Sea was like him trying to prove like prove to his dad that like he like that he could do something. That's why I mean, he's like, uh hold your horses there, kiddo. <laughs> See, the next five movies he makes it basically sums up to fuck you, dad. I'll be like, this is repetitive, but I get it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh yeah. But yeah, so, you're rigging the witch. Pretty forgettable. Pretty disappointing. Definitely not up to Ghibli, uh, Ghibli standards. Yeah. If they somehow make a sequel, just edit the two of them together. Ghibli's not really known for sequels, are they? Uh yeah, not really. Okay. They've the most they've done is a spin-off uh to uh whispers of the heart with the cat returns because okay. that's actually based on something that happens within that movie i see okay well uh i would say like if 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 and when they make the next movie uh if they choose to go with 3d animation again uh to kind of delve into that i say like, they really need to either do something different yeah. um or make some compromises to the more traditional designs because yeah. like what they're doing now just does not translate well. Yeah. They need to do what they did in their TV series, which is basically they did the cell shaded route. Cell shaded. I can see them pulling up. It's more just like the traditional Ghibli face and like uh, expressions just does not work in yeah. 3d. Um, I will say I did. Li- I did like some of the facial expressions. I'll say that like but for the most part, it was just awkward, ugly and uncomfortable to look at. Yeah. Um, it was. So either they need to really up the ante in terms of how they go about it, or they really need to drastically like question their design choices because something needs to change. Yeah. It's not working as it is. <laughs> yeah, I think specifically, oddly enough, it was the more normal faces that didn't translate well. So like earwigs, her friend, uh, the other people. Like I, I actually kind of liked Mandrakes how his. Yeah, I was just gonna say like Mandrakes had a good design. His his character worked well. <laughs> yeah, and even uh, was it Bella Yaga? Like she kind of worked out because just she, she was a bit more exaggerated yeah but um, everyone kind of had a frog-like thing to her a little bit yeah i can say that at mm-hmm. times but like it, like that's a, it, like mender's good example like big exaggerated features that can translate well to 3d animation um but for some reason like the, the way they try to do the more traditional facial animation just does not work in a 2d setting especially with ones more definitely more traditionally anime yeah um so it's it's definitely a case of like 
I'd be curious to see where they go about on the next movie. Not necessarily with this particular franchise, but just uh, just movies in general and yeah. how they'll like learn the lessons from this. Yeah. I will say a party is curious to see it in Japanese to see if there's like a bit more deafness to the characters, but I know it's still, you want to watch like, this again? <laughs> no, I'm just saying like as a curiosity, but I'm not going to. Like, I don't um, really know how much the language change would really help anything. Cause like, it's you, still more or less the same story. Yeah. And that's why I'm saying like, I don't imagine it would do much. Like I'd be curious on a character aspect, but that's not going to change the flaws of the story of how like, it's just the same thing over and over and over again. It's like people who vehemently say that, oh no, the ex- the direct the extended cut of Batman vs Superman is better than the uh, better than the original. It's like, yeah, but that's like putting glitter on a turd. It's better, but not by but it still stinks like shit. <laughs> um, it's a flawed which, analogy, but you get my point. <laughs> yeah, but um, yeah, because it's just obviously sometimes I'm also like I will fully admit I'm a subs guy, but I'll also acknowledge when, that sometimes the dubs will be better. Case in point, Cowboy Bebop. That, even the director is just like, oh, yeah, no, English version, better than the original. Because <laughs> of um, because of Steve Bloom and getting some more nuances to the character of Spike Spiegel. Like, I, okay. I don't doubt that it can't it can add certain nuances and stuff like that, but it's like, at the end of the day, the script is still more or yeah. less the same. <laughs> yeah, and like, and I'm totally acknowledging the fact that it's like I said, the story, you can only dress up 50 minutes 50 60 minutes of the same thing happening so much <laughs> yeah like the, there's only so much you can do with that so yeah um yeah you got a final thoughts for earwig and the witch not really like i said it's just a disappointment yeah well yeah we do have uh what is it judas and the black messiah that just came out yeah oh i thought you watched that one already i have not oh okay so that's uh, and me and Sarah are going to talk about The Dig and herself tomorrow. Cool. Um, and then there's a whole bunch of other shit that's on my list. <laughs> I'm hoping we can watch Willy's Wonderland. Willy's Wonderland is definitely on there. <laughs> we'll make that time movie, for that. That movie better go full freaking Nick Cage. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> uh, from what I understand, just based on the trailers and what the implications are, I don't think he actually says much except get scream and get angry. So... I'm kind of down for that. <laughs> As am I. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, yeah, I, that's all I got to say. All right. Well, then, thank you guys for watching. See you all tomorrow.